All right, this lecture we're going to talk about the inferior vena cava evaluation. Remember, you're going to have a clinical case where the patient is hypotensive or hypoxic, and at some point you're going to bring the ultrasound machine in to help you make a decision on volume status or, um, or heart function. And IVC is inferior vena cava is just part of the evaluation process. Remember, we're doing point of care bedside ultrasound, so we're not, you know, going through like the the full evaluation of the heart or the inferior vena cava, just parts of it that may help you uh, make a diagnosis. So the part of the uh, hemodynamic shock part that we're going to be evaluating is, you know, hypovolemic part of shock. Some of these other ones, such as tamponade, may also have uh, increased uh, inferior vena cava size, but the major uh, part that we're going to talk about is volume status. Remember, there are many articles coming out of using cardiac ultrasonography and predicting uh, outcome of cardiac arrest, also using during the cardiac arrest process. And one of the articles called CAUSE actually talks about <laughs> while you're doing this to go through and looking for a flat right ventricle or flat left ventricle. And I think in this same area is where you're going to be looking at the inferior vena cava. So remember, we got we have um, things that we're going to evaluate with the pump would be the pericardial fusion, global contractility of the left ventricle, or relative size of the right and left ventricle. But in this specific case, what we're going to be looking at is the, the flow of blood to the pump. So essentially the inferior vena cava. If you put your ultrasound probe and refer to the actual video that uh, discusses how to obtain the inferior vena cava view, uh, it's included in some of the cardiac lectures also. But essentially, as you put your probe in the uh, upper epigastric area, you will actually see the heart. You'll see the inferior vena cava coming out of it. You'll see liver on both sides. And this is where you actually, about a, a centimeter pass, is where you want to measure the size and we're going to go through what normal size is and what we're looking for. Now just a, uh, one of the things I have against the inferior vena cava is that it does depend on whether you're providing positive pressure ventilation or if the patient is breathing spontaneously. So if the patient is breathing spontaneously, you have essentially uh, the IVC uh, should collapse if, you're, if your volume is low or should be small. If you're providing positive pressure ventilation, um, then the IVC should expand, sli expand slightly. Here's an M mode taken of the IVC, and you can see a lot more clear here what happens to the inferior vena cava as the patient takes a breath. Actually, even if you're a normal patient and do a sniff test, which is taking a, a deep, heavy, quick breath, uh, this may do this to your IVC. So but what I actually use the inferior vena cava for is actually kind of a general trend, similar to a CVP. And I also like to sometimes watch the IBC as I give fluid to see if there's any changes in management. For instance, if you have a small IBC, which is less than 2 centimeters with a collapse greater than 50%, that correlates with a CVP less than 10, and you may have hypovolemia. If you have a large IBC, which is greater than 2 centimeters, and, and not collapsible, that correlates with a CVP greater than 10. And I think that's a safe thing to say. There are a lot more research coming recently, and you can see in some of the articles I have provided in the reading material where it talks about the differences in the inferior vena cava. But one thing I really like to use it for is the size. They did a large study in patients who were getting MRIs and CTs and found that when you're an adult above the age of 18, uh, you generally are between 1.8 to 2.2 centimeters. So that's a very normal size, no matter what your uh, size of your um, weight. So there are a few scenarios where the IVC does not work really well. For instance, if the patient was treated with vasodilators or diuretics, it alters the initial physiological state. And again, like I mentioned, positive pressure ventilation uh, fluid responsive is correlated with an increase in IVC diameter over time. This increase is usually around 12%. And you can be measured better with the M mode. So again, this is a picture of the M mode. So essentially you put the M mode where you're trying to obtain the IVC. You can actually place it one or two centimeters 
uh, before it gets into the heart. And you can actually see, it's kind of hard to see here, but you can see this is the IVC. And you can actually measure it when the patient takes a breath and the patient is not taking a breath. You can actually also look at the soft tissue up here to see when the patient has taken a breath. It sometimes helps. So here's a clip of a patient getting an IVC evaluation. Again, this is the, the heart. This is liver. This is the inferior vena cava. Now, some people say you can actually measure it in a few locations. You can measure it one to two centimeters away from the heart, then three to four centimeters, then down here, and you can take a compilation of all those. But definitely, you should not be measuring it in one location and then doing an hour or two hours later in another location. I've actually done this evaluation while I was giving a, a pressure um, IV fluid with a pressure bag, and you can actually see the IVC get bigger. And you can evaluate to see if that IVC remains large or if the heart uh, LV function gets better with more flow to the heart or if you have pulmonary edema with the lungs. Actually use all those in combination. Here's a sniff test. You see the person taking a deep sniff right there at the end and you can see it collapsing. So there's a collapse, there's a collapse. So that's, that can be done but in most of our patients they're intubated it's not easy to do. Again, this is the M mode of the sniff, sniff test, so you can see here, you can see here the sniff happening, and you can see the collapse. You can actually measure these out if you're, if you're interested in trying to get the exact numbers. One thing I do like to mention is the aorta-IVC relationship. Remember, the aorta is to the anatomical left of the patient's IVC. So a lot of times when you're trying to figure this out, what you do need to do is find the IVC and then, and then scan your probe over to the left to see if you can see the aorta. The, the IVC is generally surrounded by two, by two uh, liver size, livers on both sides, whereas the aorta, aorta is not. But I do like to show you, so for instance here, you see the person's moving. So this is the aorta at the bottom. So you only see liver on this on this side and the IVC up there. Let me see. So this is a better one. Right here. So you can see the IVC and then the aorta. And it's really important that I aorta is always a little bit more uh, echogenic, more uh, dark and gray, whereas the IVC is usually nice and anechoic. But that's not always the case. And I just want to make sure that you realize that. Also, go through the aorta lecture where I go through that in a little bit more detail. Here's again showing the sniff test. Here's the IVC, person sniffing. Obviously, I don't think you should measure it right here. I would measure it a little bit more right here. Also, another way you can confirm that the IVC is the IVC is you usually see a hepatic vein coming right off. And then this is a measurement. Again, when you put the M mode on, you can see a measurement from here to here and here to here. So this is 2.1 and 2.44 centimeters, not enough of a collapse. So remember, I actually use inferior vena cava as more a general tool. I don't use it by itself. I have seen people mistake things. So remember, you're going to be using the IVC for size, for collapsibility. But honestly, you're also going to be using the pulmonary edema in the lungs and as well as the LV function. So refer back to those videos and those didactic lectures to help you solidify how you evaluate volume status and how you can use inferior vena cava as a supplemental tube uh, tool to all the other stuff that you use when you're clinically evaluating the patient.